Hey everyone, my name is Rekishow. Welcome to Firewatch. Um, this is a game that I have been waiting for for a long time to come out on Steam, actually. Um, it's going to be more of a narrative exploration. One of those games that almost should be played like yourself in order to, to get the full effect. But I'm going to play it because this is a game that I've really wanted to play for a while. So we're going to get into it. You see Julia. Oh, I have to click. Okay. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CW Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. You are drunk. Yeah, if that's what her major is. You slur the word major and it smells like Coors. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours? She sniffs the air. Toxicology? <laughs> nice. Was that a burn, you ask? She says definitely. Where did she hear your feelings? She asks if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Cool. Mm, to use... I can see my feet. I remember the first time I ever experienced that. It was in like, the original Halo, I think. I looked down and I freaked out because I could see my feet. Use objectives. Backpack. Oh, okay. Uh, hold on, I gotta turn the sensitivity down. A little too fast for me. Brightness. Display subtitles. Yes, I'm gonna do that. Toggle head bob. I guess we'll have to see how bad that is. Keyboard. Can I play this with a kid? Oh, I can play with a controller. Oh, I'm doing that next episode. Okay, turn down the mouse sensitivity a bit. Much better. Okay, well, let's see what we're doing. Cool. It's a cool looking game. It's got some interesting uh, interesting graphics. Anything over here? That, no, I was going to say it looks like blood, but it doesn't. I don't think it's that kind of game. I hope it isn't. Well, uh, do I actually get to drive? You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in, you share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. <clears throat> Julia wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy undersized beagle Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad can happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Oh, well this is... This is not a cool question to ask me because it's just that the nothing bad could happen really makes me think that if I pick this one. Well, I gotta go with what she wants. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. You talk out on the deck, it's summer, 9 30, and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids? she asks. Kids, they're not very smart or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple little idiots. That would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. <clears throat> cool. Alright. This game is absolutely gorgeous. What's this? You're in their country, learn to live with bears. Thoroughfoot Trail is not recommended for inexperienced hikers. This man. Cool. You can zoom in. No fireworks. Two forks. Do not forget to check in. Okay. No sprinting? Nope. Oh, my computer is being loud. And I do not know why. It's Thursday night, Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. 
She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Just ignore her. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you'll feel guilty for being so angry and asks her about the evening. She says it was great. You hold onto a tiny pill of resentment. Make some coffee and go to work. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants for her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. Totally like a Victoria's Secret model. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, wow, it's dark now. Well, not dark, but getting darker. God damn, this screen is gorgeous. Absolutely love it. What does this sign say? Two forks. The lookout. Does it say lookout? Fire lookout. Yeah. Eight more miles. Jesus. Probably time to stop for the night, man. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Bucket gets kicked. Bib uh, be fuck dog. Julia yells. She gets flustered and she has trouble speaking when she's stressed. Scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all. Th you manage to scare all three of you. Weird. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you'll walk by the river. <coughs> Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Aww. Well, this is gonna... You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if that's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. Oh. She was found crying in the stairwell. probably go talk to them. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. Aw, oh, that sucks. <clears throat> Weird. Oh, I didn't mean to close it. Oh, I didn't want to close it. I wanted to read that. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to the university. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in her class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn child, little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. Ah, oh, this is so sad. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple months. This sucks, because <laughs> I actually do have a little bit of experience. My grandpa is in the hospital with Alzheimer's. It's not a... It's one of those things that's harder on the family than it is on the actual person, because they don't, they don't know. They don't understand it. It's truly a devastating thing. My god, is this beautiful. Oh, it's... A, I didn't scare you. Aw. Oh. I'm sorry. Later, man. Have a good day. Her family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day. Then every other day. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. 
You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I will cut your balls off. You slowly decide to not see your old friends that much. Julia's sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her. She visits her every day. You go out with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You've always really liked Susan. No, man. Months go by. Bucket dies. Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock in on you. In the back of your mind, you believe it's because you see her less and less. And seeing her less and less makes her forget you more, you think. Summer's coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. Oh man. Cool, I'm at the tower now. I gotta go up there. I get some weird frame rate stutters. I'll see if I can fix that for the next episode. I don't know why. Maybe I have something running in the background. I'm gonna do it a bunch on my computer, clearing space, doing you know, the usual computer maintenance. Come on. Wish I could sprint, but I can't. I probably can once I actually get a little further. This is a really uh, beat up tower. Turn on the power. There we go. Computer, calm your shit. Holy. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Two Forks Tower, this is Thoroughfare Tower. Come in. Pick it up. Okay. Hold left shift to activate radio. Okay, um, cool. Hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. Okay, there. uh, you've killed three husbands. You're a black widow and you're just out here until the heat dies down and then you'll kill again. That's clever. Ooh, very good. Bravo, <laughs> Henry. I'm gonna like this game. Okay, I sleep now? Not quite. Now you. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. I say you got fired from your job and have finally decided to write your novel. That's the sort of bullshit reason you'll find a man out in the woods. Good night. Welcome to the job. Firewatch. That was a cool intro. I enjoyed that. Day one. Cool. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Can I read with that? Can I get up or do I have to? Okay, well... I'm going to end this first episode here, guys. This is going to be a cool game. I'm going to enjoy it. Like I said, if you guys feel like you should play it yourself, I highly recommend it because it seems like one of those kind of games. It'll be, it's going to be good. We're going to have fun playing through. Thank you all so much for watching. Have yourselves a great day, and I will see you all in the next episode. Later.